good morning YouTube um, just wanted to give a couple quick updates uh, sorry I'm in the car as usual um, let's see well for starters just a warning this video is probably gonna have some TMI in it um, so some you know if you're a little sensitive or you just ate you might want to hold off um, on watching this till later but anyhow um, today I am 10 weeks and one day um, as far as symptoms, let's say, uh, definitely still nauseous, really bad in the morning if I don't eat, uh, really bad in the evening right after I'm getting off from work, um, occasionally bad late at night. The late at night is not as bad because I've gotten to the point where I've eaten again, so I can kind of combat it before it gets started. Um, and that's the biggest thing I've noticed is making sure that I eat often enough, and if I eat often enough, that kind of keeps the nausea at bay um, it's just a matter of making sure I stick with that like a couple of mornings I was running late for work and decided that oh you know I'm a skip break yeah bad idea bad bad idea um, so yeah so let's see uh, not a whole lot going on um, a little bit of cramping here and there still having some pretty intense back pain I'm actually headed to the medical Farm, medical supply pharmacy place today to try to go ahead and um, order the maternity lumbar support belt that my doctor had prescribed. The biggest problem was getting over there because they're only open eight to five. So getting over there to try to get fitted for it was going to be a pain in the butt. So I had to wait till I already had another day off. And so, excuse me, like today, I have an appointment up at Duke for my endocrinology um, for my diabetes. And of course, you know, because I'm pregnant, they see me more often. So since I'm off for that, I'm headed to the medical pharmacy place so that I can get fitted for the maternity belt, go ahead and order it, and then head up to Duke. Um, so, you know, that'll work. Um, and then I'll have to just go pick it up at some point. I don't really know when I'm going to get to go pick it up because, again, they're only open 8 to 5. And I work an hour and some change away from the place, and I don't get off till 4 o'clock. So that's, you know, always a big issue. But anyhow, um, so definitely still having some back pain, a little bit of cramping, a lot of pelvic pressure. Um, I'm finding that the pelvic pressure isn't as bad when I'm standing up. It's actually more when I sit down and lay down. It hurts more then than it does when I'm standing up. So, you know, a lot of tossing and turning at night in the bed. Um, I think last night I managed to fall asleep and I slept about six hours on my right side before I woke up and had to go to the bathroom and then I flipped over on the left. But then, of course, my right side my body hurt so much from sleeping on the same side that when I flipped over on the left, I was I started aching. And I'm like, really? You know, but I was just amazed that I was able to sleep that long without having to go to the bathroom, which tells me I must have just been sleeping really, really hard because normally I'm probably up three or four times a night using the bathroom um, at a minimum of three. So, you know, that that's one thing I will say has gotten worse. And I'm not sure if that's just hormones or if, um, it's because the babies are getting a little bit bigger and the uterus is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's the hormones, and I say that only because the last time they checked my HCG level, it really wasn't that high compared to some of the ladies I've seen online. Like, I see some folks, you know, their HCG levels in the 100,000s, 200,000s. Um, at eight weeks and two days, even with twins, my HCG level was only 55,000. And, like, two and a half weeks before that, it was at 22. So, it's... It's not, it's certainly not doubling like it should. I mean, you know, we're talking like uh, weeks and it barely doubled. So, you know, it, which is not a cause for concern because my doctor told me once before, HCG is not a end all be all sign type thing. It's just a guideline. And of course, the further along you get from our understanding, it starts to kind of taper off. So now that I'm 10 weeks, I have no idea what it is. I don't know if they'll check it today when I go to get my blood drawn for um, my diabetes stuff. I don't think so unless I request it. And at this point, you know, I really don't need them to take the extra tube of blood for that. I, you know, from what I gather, the babies are doing okay, so I'm not going to be real worried about it. Um, <clears throat> so, I know they'll check for glucose and my A1C level, and they'll check my potassium and all that other great stuff that I've been trying to attempt to keep at bay. And they'll check my blood pressure, um, which is always a concern with the blood pressure issue. Uh, had a new issue this past week, which is where the TMI warning comes in. My doctor put me on folic acid. They finally got the prescription right at the pharmacy and they put me on it. So he has me taking five of the little one milligram tabs a day. So you're looking at five milligrams of folic acid a day, which to me doesn't 
seem like a whole lot, you know, because they're little itty bitty pills, I didn't think would be a problem. So on about the second or third day I'm taking them, I start having a reaction. And I've had this reaction before to other meds, to antibiotics, to different things, where essentially the inside of my vagina and that whole area is on fire. We're talking burning, itching, my skin is peeling down there onto the tissue when I wipe. So immediately I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I've had this issue before. That means something is not working well. So I immediately stopped taking the folic acid on like day three. Cause that's, sorry, I'm trying to get over. Cause that's when I realized, oh wait, there's a problem. Um, we're now about a week later and I'm still burning and itching and it's on fire. So I don't know if it's just not out of my system yet or if something else is wrong. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, in my whole life, I think I've only had a yeast infection twice. And both times I was pregnant with my two oldest kids. And I'm sorry, I take that back. Uh, the first one was with my first child. And then the second one, I'm not sure if it was a yeast infection. I didn't actually go to the doctor and get meds. I sort of self-diagnosed and I bought that Monistat one day treatment. Oh my goodness, I thought I was gonna die. I put that stuff in and it was one of those things where I thought I was already on fire before I put it in. My vagina swole up and was on fire for days. I had an allergic reaction to the Monistat one day stuff. So that, you know, I literally, I thought I was gonna have to go to the hospital. It was so bad. So I kind of stay away from that. So I'm not sure if this might be some sort of yeast infection or uh, I think it's bacteria, vag what is it? Bacteria vaginitis or something like that I've seen online. I don't know. I just know I did a search for folic acid and I found that other women had the same problem that higher doses of folic acid can cause vaginal irritation. So I'm thinking that it might just be from that. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a couple days. I'll let it get out of my system. Maybe everything will be okay. But like I said, we're pushing a week now because I started it last Tuesday and today is Tuesday. I'm sorry, today's Wednesday. And it's still, it's pretty bad. I mean, like, literally not touching it sit down stand up moving around walking everything burns and hurts down there um yeah so i i didn't want to have to go to my doctor for that today but i was tempted to call or try to see if i could walk in this morning and ask him about it um and i may i just i really didn't want to have to bug him because i didn't think it was that important i figured it would go away on its own but yeah it's isn't that going away so i'm not really sure what to do about that so I may call them here in a little bit. Um, but other than that, not, not a whole lot is going on. Um, oh, I did finally, and I'm not sure if I had did a video since then, I don't think I did. But I did finally start being able to hear the baby's heartbeats with the Doppler at home. Um, I think the first one I was able to hear on like uh, nine weeks one day, or nine weeks two days, somewhere in there. And I had only been able to hear what I thought was baby B the first couple of days I tried it. Then I waited a couple more days, and the other day on nine weeks, six days, which would have been like two days ago, two, three days ago, I was finally able to hear what I think is both babies. Um, and I actually did two little recordings, um, one of baby A, one of baby B. Well, at least I think that's, you know, what I was listening to. I mean, I know for sure they were baby heartbeats, but I, I couldn't tell at first if it was, in fact, two different babies or if it was just one baby and it kind of shifted over. I'm pretty sure it was both babies because of where the Doppler was on my stomach. I was kind of able to one of them was way on one side and one was way on the other side so i'm almost positive that's both babies but that was the first time i had been able to hear baby a um was the day i tried so i managed to get her for i say her because i think that was a girl and i think b is a boy but um i had been able to get her for a little while maybe about 10 minutes but i didn't have the phone right next to me to record it and i knew if i moved i'd lose it so i just listened for like 10 minutes and then i waited a little later and i was able to get it again and that when i recorded it for about four minutes and then it went away and then baby B, I, I, which is the one I normally am able to hear, I was only able to get for like 10 seconds and then he, he moved around. So, you know, both of them, I have them on tape um, or on video, but it was just funny because I'm like, you know, normally B cooperates so well and then, you know, decides, nope, I'm not gonna do it. So it was kind of funny. But other than that, you know, I've just been checking with the Doppler each day and like, I, you know, I tried yesterday and I wasn't able to get A, but I got B for a very brief amount of time, literally like 10 seconds again. And then, and then you can tell he kind of moved away. Um, you know, I am a thicker girl, so it's a little harder early on to get. Um, the doctor's office hasn't tried yet. My next appointment with them is uh, next week. 
So I know they were planning to try then, and I do have an appointment set up with the peri perinatologist um, that's in another almost two weeks. I'll be 12 weeks and two days the day I go see them. So and I'm really looking forward to that appointment because I know they're going to do some in-depth um, ultrasound type stuff. I don't know if they'll do a, a 40. I'm not sure. I really would like a 40 uh, later on. You know, they didn't have that when my girls were young. Uh, when I was pregnant with them. So I'm looking forward to getting one of those done. I don't know if my regular doctor or the perinatologist does them. So if they don't, I will probably pay one of those little private offices, you know, to get one done because they're not that expensive. But it'll definitely be further along if I have to pay for it. So I'm not real sure. Alrighty. Well, that was pretty much my update. Um, that was kind of it. So I will continue to kind of follow up. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.